The weather's very miserable today, as you can tell. But me and my brother and a couple of his friends have, have decided to come out um, and fossil hunt. We're not expecting to get too much. It's a pretty poor tide, but it's better than being stuck indoors. little find that I'm going to show at the end of the video today is going to be a crocodile jaw. I've recently shown a crocodile jaw in one of our videos, however this jaw is quite a bit different from a different species and it, it looks like it's from a completely different creature. So definitely stick around for the entire video if you'd like to see that at the end. Tom's found a bit of an ammonite there. Nice little find to start off the hunt. Quite a lot of fresh rock has been coming down, as you can see. Just spotted a little oh. bellum night down here. Fossil shells next to it as well. And also, over here, it's a crushed ammonite with this nodule. Shay's found something here, not entirely sure what it is. Just found a nice copper light there. Oh wow. It's got a nice shape to it, hasn't it? Yeah, it's perfectly exposed on top of the rock. And there's just a bellum light alongside it, just popping out the edge there. Oh yeah. That's an interesting little find, pretty unusual. Good work. Tom's also found a few more fossils over here, just put them on top of the rock. So let's go have a little look at them. I think I need to catch up and find something. I've not found anything just yet. Okay, so what do we have? So we have a pretty big, squashed, what looks to be a harposerous ammonite on top of this rock, on top of this slab of shale. Pretty golden, which is nice. And also, Bellum knife. Uh, what's this? Does it look to be anything inside that? And on here we have some fossil shells. They're lovely and golden as well. Let's just spot over another pretty big ballon right? different to the species we've already found so far. Something which is quite unusual over here is this structure. It's like loads of tiny little spikes. And it's called corn in corn. Another big lump of it down here as well. Very unusual.
So this is part of the Harpocerus ammonite. Unfortunately, it's just the mouth border and a little bit of the actual ammonite itself, but the rest of it's broken off. And then down here, there's part of a crushed Phyrocerus, which is an even bigger ammonite. Just picked up this ammonite from the sand and gave it a wash off. Turned out pretty lovely. Just down here. Can you tell what it is? It's a huge lump of fossilized wood. Quite a few pieces of fossilised plant here and a huge piece of sandstone. It's a massive leaf down here as well. Unfortunately most of it, the actual black fossil itself has worn away, so it's just leaving the imprint of the leaf. It's all pretty nice and unusual to see. There's another one just exposing down here as well. It would be very difficult to save this fossil though. It's all the sandstone just such it's filled with cracks. It's very soft as well, so it would probably just break into loads of pieces if you tried to save it. Which is a shame. Back home now in time to show the crocodile jaw. So this isn't the jaw that I was talking about. This is actually part of a long, well, a long jaw as well, but just a section of it because the rest of it was either predated when it died or most likely has just been destroyed by the sea. You know, that's often the case with fossils in general. No matter where you find them, the elements such as rain or sea just destroys them. So it's really important that you, you can find them as quick as possible. So this is the jaw of a crocodile, like I said, and you can see the tooth sockets there. And quite often when you clean all of the sockets out, you can see like little secondary teeth coming through. And just so it happens on this specimen, you can't really see that. Uh, but it's quite unusual because there's more tooth sockets on one side than the other. You don't generally see that. 
And you see at the back of the jaw, it's quite crushed. But it's still a very, very nice piece that my brother found. And the jaw that we were going to talk about that's a bit more complete is over here. So this big jaw is from a skull that would have been a bit longer. It would have, the skull would have come to about here roughly. Um, so this is the upper jaw and the skull would have been at the back. You'd have had eye sockets here and the back of the skull would have finished about there. Uh, but unfortunately the edge is all ragged and that's because well we're pretty sure it's been predated when it died so before it fossilized something's come along and actually eaten off the back of the skull it's ripped off the back of the skull and the lower jaw has also been torn away with it there was no vertebrae no ribs no scutes which are the armored plates there was nothing else with it this was the only part of the beast that we found and very luckily some of the teeth are actually still in place and these were very, very difficult to prepare out. My dad did the preparation work and managed to keep the teeth still in place. Like I was mentioning before, the secondary teeth coming through, you can actually see those on this specimen. So cut down here, just as an example. You can see the mm. teeth coming through there, 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 there. Pretty much all the way along, there's teeth coming through. <laughs> So we've got a big slab here. Looks like there's a big bellum night on the top of it. So let's expose it a little. That's a nice chunky one. There we are, it's exposed to the very end. There's already a natural fracture through it. 